Hi, I'm Simon, a product manager on the platform team here at Facebook. At F8 in April 2014, we announced a number of changes to our platform to help improve the experiences people have with apps integrated with Facebook, as well as increase stability for developers. In the previous video, we looked at how the new Facebook login lets people choose the information they share with apps, and our login review process, which your app will need to go through if you want to request more than the three basic permissions. In this video, we're going to cover step-by-step step how to upgrade your apps to the new version of Facebook login and the latest version of the Graph API. We'll cover versioning and the timeline to upgrade, changes to the permissions you can request from people, how to handle when people decline permissions in the new login dialog, changes to how apps access friends' information, and the transition to app scoped user IDs. For developers, one of the biggest changes we announced was that from now on, the Graph API supports versioning with a two-year stability commitment for core APIs. This means everything is now versioned. When you call the Graph API directly or invoke any of our dialogues, you can specify a version number in the path. Even our developer tools, like the Graph API Explorer, support versioning, which makes it really easy to test API calls and see how they behave between different versions. We wanted to give developers plenty of time to upgrade to v2 of the API. Here's how the upgrade timeline works. We announced v2.0 of the Graph API at F8 on April the 30th, 2014. Since then, we've announced a further update, v2.1. Both versions will be around for at least two years from launch. Apps created since F8 are already using v2.0 or v2.1. Apps which were active before F8 have until April the 30th, 2015 to upgrade to version two of the API. On April 30th, 2015, any app which hasn't upgraded will be automatically switched to v2.0. This upgrade timeline applies to all apps, including websites, games on Facebook, and iOS and Android apps. If you have mobile apps, one thing to consider in planning when to upgrade is the time it takes for people to download the latest binaries from the store. Our data shows that on iOS, it takes around 80 days for 90% of an app's daily active people to upgrade to the latest version of your app. On Android, this is even more acute. It takes around 140 days for 90% of people to upgrade. V2.0 and the new login contain significant changes from the previous versions. So to protect people's experiences, we strongly recommend you aim to ship an updated version of your iOS and Android apps to the store in time for the holiday season. That's in time for December 25th, 2014. So how do you actually go about beginning the process of upgrading? You can manually start specifying a version number in calls to the Graph API, but the simplest way to upgrade your apps to the new login is to use our latest SDKs. We have updated SDKs for iOS, Android, a new JavaScript SDK, and a completely rewritten PHP SDK. For iOS, Android, and PHP, these SDKs call v2.0 or v2.1 under the hood. For the new JavaScript SDK, you specify the version number in your init call. Note that the new JavaScript SDK should now be loaded from a new path sdk.js. Graph API v2.0 and above contains some important differences from the previous API. Let's look at the key points. Changes to how some permissions work. How to handle decline permissions in the case where people using the new login dialog choose to decline one or more of the permissions your app is requesting. Changes to how your app accesses friends information. And lastly, app scoped user IDs. Let's start with permissions. In v1, a single permission called basic info gave your app access to the user's identity as well as their friends list. In v2 and above, we've split this into two permissions, public profile and user friends. The public profile permission grants you access to a person's identity, including their name and profile picture. This permission is included by default on every login on the web, but on iOS and Android, you must request public profile explicitly. If you want to access the user's friends, 
you must now specify the user friend's permission along with any other permissions you'd like to request. We separated these two permissions as a number of apps wanted to use Facebook login just to let people log into their apps, not necessarily to provide a social experience. Next, in V1, it was possible for people to bring friends information with them when they logged into an app. We heard clear feedback that this made some people feel uncomfortable. So in V2.0 and above, people can bring their information into your app, but not, for example, their friends' photos or friends' likes. Each person who logs into your app is in control of sharing their information. This means that in V2.0 and above, friends' permissions, for example, friends' photos, are no longer available. There are a number of other changes too. For example, the way you access a person's check-ins has changed. We now have a new permission called User Tagged Places. For a full list of the permissions and API changes, see our platform change log on developers.facebook.com. The most notable change between the new Facebook login and the previous version is the ability for people to choose which permissions they grant to your app. People can choose to decline any permission your app requests except public profile. This means people can decline permissions such as user friends and email. It's critically important that your app handles the case where people choose to decline permissions. You have a number of options here. In some cases, the decline permission may not be critical to the function of your app, in which case you should let the person continue onward uninterrupted. But if someone declines a permission which is critical for your app to function, you may do one of two things. First, you could ask the person to enter the information directly into a form within your own app. Alternatively, you could re-request the permission from Facebook. To do this, you'll have to know which permissions the person has declined. On iOS and Android, you call the declined permissions or get declined permissions methods on the FB session object. If you call the graph API directly, you can call slash me slash permissions and filter for the declined permissions. To increase the likelihood that people will grant you a permission they previously declined, it's important that you first explain to people why you actually need that permission. You should then give the person an explicit call to action to invoke the login dialog again. For this reason, if you want to re-prompt for declined permissions, you must call a special method to re-display the login dialog. On iOS and Android, you call the request new read permissions or the request new publish permissions methods on the FB session object. On the web, you must pass auth type re-request to the login dialog. Broken login experiences are a real source of frustration for the people who use apps. It's really important that as you upgrade your app to the new Facebook login, you take care to ensure your app provides a great experience, even when people choose not to grant all the permissions you asked for. The next key change is how apps access friends information. In v2.0 and above, slash me slash friends returns the person's friends who also use your app. There are some key cases where apps need information about a person's friends who don't use the app, and so we've built some APIs to support these cases. First, your app may want to let people tag and mention their friends in stories people publish. The Taggable Friends API returns a list of all the person's taggable friends, including those who don't use the app. It returns their name, a profile picture, and a token which can be used to tag those people in stories published by your app. This API requires review by Facebook before you can use it in production. You can request review in the same way you do with permissions, in the Status and Review tab of your app's dashboard. Next. For games with a Canvas presence, it's a common design pattern to build custom invites dialogues within the UI of your game. The Invitable Friends API returns a person's friends who don't use your app with enough information about them to render a custom invites dialogue. Just like the Taggable Friends API, the Invitable Friends API returns people's names and profile pictures, as well as a token you can pass to the Requests dialogue to invite them to your game. 
If you want to surface the mutual friends between two people, the Social Context API has a Mutual Friends field, which returns the specific IDs of the mutual friends who also use the app, as well as a total count of mutual friends. Lastly, the Friends Edge now includes a total count of the person's friends, both those who do and do not use your app. We understand it's important to developers to have a way to let people invite their friends to use your app. We have a number of ways to let people invite friends. The best mechanism to use depends on your platform and your app's type. For iOS and Android apps, we recommend you use the new message dialog and include a link to your app. This lets people send a private Facebook message to the people they want to invite. If your app is a game with a Canvas presence, you can continue to use the requests dialog on web and mobile and you can use the Invitable Friends API to build a custom multi-friend selector. For websites, we recommend using the Send dialog. Again, this lets people send a private message to their friends, inviting them to use your app. We've covered changes to permissions, friends information, and invites. The last change I wanted to cover was app scoped user IDs. We introduced app scoped user IDs to help protect people's information. Here's how they work. Previously, when someone logged into your app, that person was referred to by their original Facebook user ID. In this example, 123. But going forward, when a person first logs into any app using the new Facebook login, they'll be known instead by a user ID scoped to that app. This means that the ID by which a person is known is stable within an app, but is different between applications. In this example, 456 and 789. We wanted to make this transition as easy as possible for developers, and so we followed these design principles. Firstly, there's not going to be a sudden change. The first time you'll see an app scoped user ID is when a new user first logs into your app using the new Facebook login. This means that you're in control of when you transition to v2 and to app scoped user IDs. Next, the IDs of the people who have already logged into your app will not change. You may already have rows in your user table keyed off the Facebook ID. We knew that changing these would have been disruptive. AppScoped user IDs also share the same format as the IDs you see today. You don't need to make any changes to your database's columns. Lastly, we realize there's some cases where you need to know the same user across multiple apps. We built solutions to help during testing and development, as well as for those businesses who operate multiple apps such as social game developers. For these two cases, we built test apps and the business mapping API. Test apps are really simple to create from within your app's dashboard. Each test app settings are copied from your production app, and test apps share the same app scoped user ID namespace as your production app, meaning you can share a copy of your production database when testing and developing. The Business Mapping API lets you map a person's IDs across all the apps they use that your business owns. See our documentation for more information on setting up and using the Business Mapping API. So hopefully by now, you're armed with all the information you need to upgrade your app to Graph API v2.0 or v2.1. We've covered how versioning works and the timelines you have to upgrade, changes to the permissions you can request, how to handle when people decline permissions in the new Facebook login, changes to how your app accesses friends information, and app scoped user IDs. So what are the next steps? First, we encourage you to submit for login review now. For apps which were active before April 30th, 2014, the outcome of login review will not take effect until April 30th, 2015. The earlier you submit for review, the more time you'll have to react to any changes our review team suggests. Second, upgrade to our latest iOS, Android, PHP, and JavaScript SDKs. These all call the latest API versions by default. Using them will also mean the people using your app will start to see the new Facebook login. Next, when you start using the new Facebook login, you'll want to ensure your app provides a great experience even when people choose to decline permissions. Fourth, ensure that your database works with app scoped user IDs. If your business operates multiple apps, you'll want to set up the business mapping API. Fifth, if parts of your app rely on accessing friends data, 
you might want to redesign these features to ensure they'll still work come April 30th, 2015. Lastly, if you have iOS or Android apps, we strongly recommend you ship an upgraded version of your app to the App Store or Google Play before the December 25th holiday. This will ensure most of the people who use your app have had a chance to update before all Facebook integrated apps are automatically upgraded to v2.0 on April 30th, 2015. For more information, please check out the comprehensive upgrade guide and change log you'll find on developers.facebook.com. If you have questions, please join the Facebook Developers Group, where members of our engineering, product, review, and partnerships teams may be able to answer your questions directly. Thanks for taking the time today. We really appreciate you upgrading your apps to Graph API v2 and the new Facebook login.